Well, welcome to another episode of AWSP TV. We're excited today to have Sue Anderson from OSPI with us, who's the Director of Educator Effectiveness. And we've invited her to come down and spend some time chatting with us today about TPEP and our evaluation system and uh, putting the G, growth mindedness, in, in our evaluation. So yes. welcome, we're glad you're here. Thanks, Ron, I'm really excited to be here today. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, good. Well, so maybe just kind of open with our, our conversation around a little bit of history of TPEP, and you've been in this from the very beginning. I have, yeah. And when, yeah. It, when it started, I was actually in a school district, okay. and uh, part of the team, uh, working with Scott Seaman, in fact, uh, leading, leading Tumwater's mm -hmm. uh, foray into the world of TPEP, and then uh, became an assistant principal in Tumwater, yeah and had a chance to use it as an evaluator, um, be part of that process. And now um, now it's part of my plate at OSPI. Yeah, so you spent a lot of time in the TPEP world these Yes, days. I have. Yeah, I have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, so talk, I mean, since you've seen it from the beginning and you know where we are now and kind of where we're headed, maybe just talk to us a little bit about what have you seen over time? TPEP's been with us for eight years now? Yeah, I think it's been eight. Okay. Um, maybe a little bit more than that. And um, I think, you know, when it first rolled out, I know districts were all involved in um, understanding sort of the nuts and bolts of it. Mm -hmm. How is this going to work? Um, how are we going to score things? What what that's going to, what is that going to look like? And we um, also, every district got to choose an instructional framework. Right. And so I know in Tumwater we were very busy about that, exploring all three, deciding which one we were mm -hmm. gonna use, um, and figuring all of that out. And um, I almost see where we are now as a recovery from <laughs> that period. Right. <laughs> in that um, some, a few districts in our state already had an instructional framework. Mm -hmm. They had said, okay, we want some descriptions about what best practice is in instruction and they looked toward you know Marzano or Sal or or Danielson right. to describe that and, and they had already been doing work in that area before TPEP ever came around but um, but other districts most districts actually their first uh, brush with an instructional framework was when they were choosing one for TPEP right. and I think that has saddled the instructional framework with um, with a compliance mindset, mm -hmm. and I know in some places, you know, the the time the framework comes out is around evaluation conversations, and otherwise right. it's sort of locked in the cupboard. Um, so what we're really wanting to do is bring those frameworks front and center, mm -hmm. and say these are the foundational documents about you know what we think in you know good instruction looks like, right. and they should be guiding our thinking about practice mm -hmm. all the time. Um, and then, and then we look at them, you know, through the lens, and and that is the growth lens right, right there. And then, when it comes time for evaluation, you know, we say, okay, so here's the evidence of practice, and where does this fit on the instructional framework? Right. And it provides that great third point. So it's not, you know, your opinion and my opinion about what differentiation looks like or what good classroom management is. Mm -hmm. You know, we can see here's what happened, and here's how it's described in our framework. Where does this match up? Right. You know, I, I evaluated teachers pre-TPEP uh -huh. and then post. And, mm -hmm. you know, it was really interesting when I first started evaluating that um, classroom management or instructional skill, which were part of the criterion that we evaluated on, had no framework that I was aware of uh -huh. um, to talk about what that looked like. So uh -huh. it really was you and I having a conversation around what that meant. Right. And what did I think, satisfactory or unsatisfactory. Right, yeah. Um, and I really appreciated that both the instructional framework and then the learning focused conversation mm -hmm. um, skill set really helped to elevate my practice and I felt like my conversations with teachers were so much better because we had that third point and mm -hmm. kind of a continuum and a roadmap of, roadmap of what good teaching and learning look like, mm -hmm. um, tools around how to effectively have those conversations mm -hmm. around where are we, where do we want to go, um, yeah, it wasn't easy. You know, I was in a pilot district, so uh -huh. there was a lot of work that went into that. Right, but yeah. um, coming out the back side of that, I was so thankful that between those two pieces, I felt like evaluation and the conversations that happened in between each evaluation mm -hmm. were so much more productive. Mm -hmm. um, 
which is where I'm excited about this conversation today because we're talking about how, how are we starting to see our system move from compliance um, and logistics to conversation and growth and really kind of road mapping what it looks like to be continuously improving our practice. Mm -hmm. Sure, so, sure, yes. yeah. Yeah, so um, as you think about kind of that, that growth mindset and how we leverage those instructional frameworks, um, you know, evaluation is something that we're required to do. Mm -hmm. It's this, um, I, I'm starting to talk about the evaluation event that happens in May mm -hmm. and evaluation the mindset that happens all the time. Mm -hmm. Every interaction we have, every um, lesson that we deliver, we're hopefully continuously evaluating mm -hmm. how did that go, what would I do differently, what went well, you know, how do I adjust for students. Um, so maybe talk a little bit about, you know, how have you seen and what is your vision around how we're really using a framework to think about improvement as opposed to this document that we pull out in September and in May mm -hmm. to say, who am I, what's my score? Mm -hmm. Well, I think it really, um, I think one of the, the key things that, um, that we've learned in uh, the University of Washington just completed a report yeah. on principles and TPEP. And, and principals uh, overwhelmingly believe that that it has increased the quality of their conversations mm -hmm. with teachers, but they also feel very constrained by time and right. the ability to have those conversations. And um, and I think part of that is the idea that these conversations need to be the evaluation events right. rather than that ongoing mm -hmm. feedback. Um, a thing that's helped is um, one of the changes that we made in the WAC actually expanded the definition of observation. Yeah. So yes. that um, so that you can be collecting evidence on Criterion Eight when you walk in and spend some time in a PLC, or on Criterion Seven when you go to Family Math Night, or um, you know some of these other things that happen when you sit down with the teacher to look at student work. You can be you know collecting evidence. It isn't just the old uh, pre-conference observation, post-conference right. time yeah. that really is, you know, time that you're observing. But I think the other thing is that that time isn't, isn't a, um, it's not a hoop time. It's the very real work mm -hmm. of the school. It's the, you know, how am I growing as a teacher? How am I growing as a school leader? And thinking about that in terms of the instructional framework, which really describes pretty much everything that teachers do. Right. And so using that tool um, for reflection on a pretty consistent basis. Mm -hmm. And I think the thing that's so wonderful about an instructional framework is that, you know, once you take a look and say, okay, so here's where my practice matches up, how can it get even better? All you have to do is look to the right. right. And it right. tells you yeah. exactly what to do. Mm -hmm. So you know, kind of staying on that then, we, who is it that can collect that evidence and collect the information and have those conversations? I think a lot of times we get stuck in this idea that it has to be the principal and the teacher that are collecting that evidence and having those conversations and kind of moving along that um, continuum mm -hmm. from, you know, a level one to a level four and sat mm -hmm. to, you know, distinguished. but. What have you seen around the state in terms of how people are really starting to leverage that and get traction around true growth? I think that um, if the principal feels that he or she is the only instructional leader in the building, mm -hmm. that's, that's problematic yeah. um, because there's no way that one person can be the keeper of all that growth. Right. And, um, and I think in places where principals feel like they've kind of figured it out around TPEP, a couple of things, I, I would say probably the number one understanding that they have is that they can't do it by themselves. Mm -hmm. They may have something very concrete, like an assistant principal or um, a dean of students, you know, someone who can either be taking on some of the evaluation piece or can be um, maybe, you know, doing some of the other tasks that free the principal up to be right. able to spend more time in classrooms. but. Um, but the other thing, I think the, the big resource that's out there um, 
are the teachers in the building. Mm -hmm. And so, I mean, I know that when I was a teacher, I was, um, you know, I was a pretty good teacher and I was good at a number of things. I wasn't very good at differentiation. Mm -hmm. and, um, and I, you know, as, as an instructional leader, wasn't the best person in the school to lead conversations with teachers around differentiation. Right. I walked into classrooms where there were teachers knocking it out of the park on mm -hmm. differentiation. Those are the people who should be leading that work in the building. Right. And so who, it's, um, I think sometimes it can be a time saver in the end to spend a little bit of time thinking about each, what is the contribution that each person in the building can be making mm -hmm. to this system? And um, you know what is this teacher ready for? And it might be a leadership role. Mm -hmm. How can this teacher maybe be leading on something where he or she is really skillful? Um, and it, or it might be a next learning step. Um, mm -hmm. I think that can be helpful. You know, it's. I like that you mentioned that. I I think about. Um, you know, Fullen's work, and he talks about the lead learner in the building, and that as the instructional leader, you can't lead at all, and probably shouldn't be. There are people mm -hmm. that can teach and lead circles around what I can do as a principal because that's their wheelhouse and that's their day-to-day -day practice. Mm -hmm. You know, using mm -hmm. that same example, and I would agree, in my, in my own practice as a teacher, I didn't differentiate, differentiate instruction as well as I could have and should have. Mm -hmm. So for me to push in and lead that work doesn't make sense, but for me to facilitate that mm -hmm. and encourage those conversations and set up structures and practices and really give permission mm -hmm. that the growth in practice happens in the collegial conversations, mm -hmm. not in the you know, top-down kind of conversation. Um, what a great way to encourage you know, high-quality PLCs, mm -hmm. um, you know, how do we use staff meeting time? Mm -hmm. I think there's a lot of ways that teachers can collect their own evidence mm -hmm. and push themselves in their practice without me having to be the one to, to, to lead that. Right, and it's so much uh, more easily received when it's someone right. who is doing that work of right. teaching who's sharing that message of how it might be possible. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. So, Kind of moving into that idea then that you know every teacher has something specifically something specific that they're working on um, you know this idea of individualizing or differentiating mm -hmm. your evaluation mm -hmm. um, and that self-assessment where you are in your practice and where you want to mm -hmm. where you want to be mm -hmm. um, can you talk a little bit about what you see and what you see the evolution of that looking like in terms of you know principals being able to facilitate and lead and kind of push that idea of the differentiated individualized evaluation system mm -hmm. sure um, I think initially because we were all kind of uncomfortable with this new system it was sort of clunky yeah <laughs> and I think what that led to actually is um, principals taking a much more um, active role than uh, you know kind of controlling the process because they were the ones who knew how and I think a lot of teachers are like what does this mean what do I do what, mm -hmm. am, what am I supposed to do and um, and I believe that over time um, as principals have really sort of trusted the power of the framework and also their ability to empower their teachers um, in working with an individual teacher it, it you know, this is where we get into, I think, the difference between comprehensive and, and focused right. evaluations. But, um, but when a teacher's in a comprehensive situation, it's kind of like, it's like a full physical, you know, everything's got to get checked out. Right. And right. at the same time, it's impossible to focus on everything. Right. And so that experience can be very powerful if there is some focus to it. And um, principles are not able to be in classrooms necessarily. I mean, they, they aren't there to experience the day-to-day -day of right. what the teacher is experiencing. Right. And so, um, to some extent, you know, I think to a large extent, it's important for the, the principal to facilitate the ability of the teacher to do a good job with mm -hmm. self-assessment mm -hmm. and to use learning-focused conversation skills to really facilitate that, that self-examination and to coach teachers around 
you know, figuring out where they believe their um, instructional growth can have the most impact on students. So in my work around the state, self-assessment seems like it can be kind of a bugaboo in places because mm -hmm. there are some places where um, people are not necessarily encouraged to either engage in or share mm -hmm. the self-assessment. Or perhaps sometimes even allowed. <laughs> right. Um, yet, you know, how do you know where you are if you don't stop and inspect it and reflect mm -hmm. on where, where that is? So mm -hmm. um, can you talk a little bit about just what is the best practice around that? So say you are in a system where whether it's contractually, whether it's just kind of the culture, the climate of the district, whatever that is, that um, people are kind of holding those self-assessments tightly. Mm -hmm. How would you guide people to use it anyway in order for that to be an important tool to reflect on your practice and continue to see where you are in, in terms of that journey um, towards improvement? Mm -hmm. I think perhaps it's to ignore the self-assessment as, as a thing mm -hmm. <laughs> and simply have a conversation um, with the teacher about, okay, so, um, you know, here we, here we are um, getting ready to start a new year and we can maybe talk about this later about sure. a conversation that may have happened in, in May around, around what we're talking about now, but um, ready to start a new year and um, so as you have had a chance to get to know your class a little bit and are thinking about what some of their needs are as learners, what do you see as some areas that you'd like to focus on, mm -hmm. you know, as a, as a teacher, as a learner, as the lead learner in your classroom? Right. Um, and I think you can um, avoid the conversation about any specific tool that might have done that, but just what are their reflections on however they have come to that conclusion, whether they went into eval and did a full bore self-assessment right. or whether they simply spent some time over the summer thinking about how they wanted to improve in their practice. Um, how can you, you know, capture that and then make sure that you're there to support them in that learning that they've identified. Have you, have you seen um, places where people are getting traction around really kind of leading learning about the framework itself. I know that, you know, a statute says that it, it's our responsibility as building leaders to ensure that our teachers understand their evaluation system mm -hmm. and principal evaluators mm -hmm. and sure principals do. Um, but I really believe that unless you really understand your framework, it's hard to speak framework mm -hmm. and it's also hard to think about where do I go next? Mm -hmm. So have you seen kind of best practices or places where people really are using the frameworks to generate and drive conversation around quality instruction and what that looks like? Sure. Um, I think that in a number of districts, they are very intentional in any kind of professional learning setting in pulling out the framework and, and you know, having it sort of front and center. This is, mm -hmm. this is you know, we're going to be working on differentiation or, or um, you know, student talk today. Uh -huh. And, um, you know, here's what it looks like in our framework and then, you know, really kind of making that happen. The other thing that some districts are doing um, just in the last couple years as people have been applying for the TPEP I grant money, um, some of them, uh, particularly those where the, um, where the principal staff it had, has been relatively stable over mm -hmm. the last seven mm -hmm. or eight years, um, they've brought in framework specialists to kind of revisit the framework. Let's yeah. go through this again. I mean, we don't want to do the whole, you know, six day thing, but where are some areas where we might refocus our mm -hmm. learning and just kind of remind ourselves of, of what it really says in that framework. Um, some are using the video calibration tools that are now in eval, mm -hmm. um, but some are just, you know, really just kind of looking back at the framework itself and thinking about um, about their own understandings of that framework and then around the work that they're doing with their staff. Yeah. You know, I appreciate you bringing that up. One of the things that we spend a lot of time talking with principals about is this idea that just because you d touch it once doesn't mean we're done. Right. You know, whether we talk about what are our agreements or commitments as a staff mm -hmm. around what our school year is going to look like, what, you know, when we do PBIS with kids, mm -hmm. we do it every year and we do it a, a couple of times a year. Mm -hmm. Um, why wouldn't we do that with staff? Mm -hmm. And you know, it's it's interesting when I think about some of the districts who were early adopters or implementers of the evaluation system. 
when have they really taken time to come back and open the hood and really inspect what they're doing and mm -hmm. say, is this, is this the way it should be or is this the way we've always been doing it? Yeah. And what an opportunity to be able to um, invite some people from the outside to come in and help you reflect and inspect and maybe kind of rethink mm -hmm. some of the practices. Sure. Um, it's sure. interesting when I work with, with um, some of our members that we hear what goes on in the district and we say, are you doing that because you think you have to? Mm -hmm. Or is it self-inflicted? Is it something you opposed on yourself? Because here's what the law says. Uh -huh. And in some ways, we make lives difficult. Right. for ourselves in, right. in, in the TPEP realm. We've developed over the past few years um, an evaluation system toolkit, and we're actually yeah. gonna put the uh, finishing touches on the June version and pop it out. It'll be on the C-STEP website until um, it, we can make it compliant with the requirements for the OSPI website. But we've been sharing it out over the last few years, and it gets better every time we do. Okay. Um, but there inevitably, every time we've taken it and shared it with a, a group of districts, at some point something comes up and um, they say, yeah, but, you know, blah, 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 blah. And we say, well, that's a local decision. Right. <laughs> you know, it's not in the WAC, it's not in the RCW, it may be in your CBA, but it wasn't required. Yeah. And I think that they're, a, at the beginning when people were afraid of TPAP, um, I mean, you know, I'm, I'm, it's hyperbole, but yeah. when people were concerned about it, yeah. they were, you know, they made a lot of rules around mm -hmm. how it would be used to protect themselves and also, I think, to make sure that it got used right. um, appropriately. And, um, and I think now a lot of districts are thinking, well, okay, we're, we're more comfortable with how this is working. And in fact, some of these things are getting in our way yeah. um, and not allowing us to, they're, they're creating hoops that we're jumping through, they're creating a compliance mindset, yeah. and what we really wanna be able to do, you know, every teacher, every principal, every year gets to do TPAP. Right. So how can, this, um, how can this activity become a really important tool in the box? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. um, because it's all about the right stuff. It's about right. great teaching, it's about great leading, and so how can that be, something that we are excited about and isn't about checking boxes, but something that really helps push push things forward. Right. Well, you know, when it when it first rolled out, we were worried about the the TPEP police and the yes. you know the commando <laughs> right. helicopters yeah. coming in and making sure everything yeah. was compliant. Exactly. And, um, it was so much about nuts and bolts and am I meeting the law mm -hmm. and if if I'm not rating a certain number of people unsatisfactory, I'm not doing my job and yes. all of that stuff. Yeah. Oh. Um, and because of that, we skipped over the whole concept that it, it could and should be this organic part of what we do. Mm -hmm. You know, the, my mind always jumps to the phrase we use in our district was just this natural harvest. Yes. What are you already doing mm -hmm. that we can stop and take a picture of and take a look at and say, mm -hmm. so what is this an example of? Is mm -hmm. this an example of great practice? Mm -hmm. Is it an example of, you know, something that's solid but I can improve on? Mm -hmm. um, and I think there's a great opportunity for principals to be able to say, you know, when we talk about what's difficult in the TPEP world for me, mm -hmm. I, I think a really great question to ask is, so is that difficult piece or process difficult because of something we've self-inflicted, we've mm -hmm. told ourselves we have to do, mm -hmm. or is it something that's really in statute and then to start to think about, so how, how, what do I do about that? Are there mm -hmm. some other practices or, um, some lines of thinking that can allow me to come at it a different way. Right, right. Um, I know that the UW study talks about um, some spaces where principals found that TPEP got easier because they were able to do some things. Mm -hmm. um, can mm -hmm. you talk a little bit about, you know, what, what did the research tell us about places where principals felt like, you know, it's, it's not so bad, mm -hmm. it's, it's working. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, what was that? What did people point towards? They, they really, the, I think the most important thing that, um, that principals who were not feeling um, un, unduly burdened by uh -huh. it, or in fact were seeing it as a, you know, a help to them, was they did really share the load. Right. They said, okay, so um, my admin assistant is helping me in these ways mm -hmm. um, by making sure that I have stuff, the stuff that has to happen, the, right. the, those compliance pieces are scheduled and, and that stuff is, 
you know, ready to roll. So I don't have to worry about that. Mm -hmm. um, they uh, had support from their district office. Um, their, um, they, were, they felt that they had colleagues from whom they could uh, learn, people they could share ideas mm -hmm. with, thought partners around this process. And then they also looked toward their staff for assistant, uh, assistance. If they had an assistant principal or if they had a dean of students, mm -hmm. um, you know, being thoughtful about what uh, that person's skills were and where they might best be used. Um, and then just really leveraging the heck out of teacher leadership yeah. and uh, how can I get teachers. So we haven't really talked about the, the changes to the focused evaluation yeah. Yeah. And, um, and I think this has been um, a great boon to some principals. Yeah. Um, that idea that in, in the focused evaluation your score is already set. It's what you've got on your comprehensive. Right. So choose something challenging. Right to yeah. work on and um, and you know my job as the instructional leader is to provide support for that. Well mm -hmm. support might look like hooking you up with the three or four other people in your school who are working on that same thing right. mm -hmm. and a thoughtful colleague who's pretty smart about it mm -hmm. and you know as a PLC you're digging into that and I'm mm -hmm. just cheering you on. Right. And um, I think those those kinds of things not only take some burden off the principal, mm -hmm. um, they deepen relationships, they deepen trust, and, uh, and they also just um, make, make it clear that it's not about the evaluation, it's about the growth that yes. can happen during this time. Yeah. And um, so, uh, I think it, ha it has tremendous potential mm -hmm. and I think in places where principals have been able to leverage the other folks in the system mm -hmm. who can help them, they're feeling um, more comfortable, even maybe excited about this opportunity mm -hmm. to be able to leverage growth. Yeah, I, I appreciate that. The, the idea that as a principal, it's, my job is to help to help to guide you, help to facilitate that conversation around, so where is it you see yourself heading? Mm -hmm. um, provide the resources, whether mm -hmm. it's some fiscal pieces or the opportunity to visit other teachers or just the connecting, the human resources. Mm -hmm. um, and then really getting out of the way mm -hmm. and letting the professional be a professional. Right. Right? You, right. As a teacher, I know what I need. I know where I am. Um, I could use your guidance in helping me to kind of see the roadmap sometimes mm -hmm, sure but let me be the one to drive that car right and to as a principal to be able to use the evaluation system or structure i guess to say okay so let's hit the hit the pause button every once in a while mm -hmm. check in where are we going mm -hmm. what's needed mm -hmm. what's missing mm -hmm. um and kind of recalibrate mm -hmm. and then go again mm -hmm. as a principal that takes some load off of me it honors and values the professional. Right. And we all like to do things that we have choice in. Right. So our That's teachers right. feel honored and respected because they've got choice. And we check in and we're dotting the I's and crossing the T's in the evaluation world. Mm -hmm. But we're not, the, we're not having to lead that. Right. Teachers get to lead it because they're the professionals. Right. Awesome. And they know best what they need. Yeah. So you and I sit on the TPEP steering committee yeah. together. A couple of years ago, we had this opportunity to really kind of um, take a look at focus yeah. and kind of drove some whack changes around uh, making some things more allowable and taking some pressures off. So mm -hmm. maybe talk a little bit about, you know, kind of what is the intent mm -hmm. and what are some good practices around, you know, I still feel like this whole idea of the comprehensive score carries across and focus for a few years mm -hmm. um, allows us to dig deep. Mm -hmm. I, f I feel like for a lot of people that's still kind of new mm -hmm. and not 100% sure about what I do with that. So mm -hmm. talk a little bit about from a OSPI or a ledge perspective around, so what about that? What, is, what does that look like? Well, I think that, you know, the, the uh, I remember very well those meetings and perhaps mm -hmm. you do too, where it became very evident to us that we, the focused evaluation was becoming this uh, this really very hoopy <laughs> thing, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and um, and for very logical reasons, 
uh, teachers and principals alike, we're not necessarily choosing something challenging. Mm -hmm. um, it took more time if you did that, and, and time is always short. Um, but more important, there's risk. There was risk Absolutely. involved. If I start looking at something that I I know is an area where I need to grow, mm -hmm. what's going to happen? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, so what we really wanted to do was take the risk out of that and, mm -hmm. and say, no, no, this is a supported growth opportunity. This mm -hmm. isn't this isn't risky because you've already proven through your comprehensive evaluation that you're you're good. You know, we're yeah. we're excited you're here teaching in our building. And yeah. um, that's not what we're here about. Now we're about what's next for you. Mm -hmm. And um, so we're excited about that. Um, there's this funny little um, thing that's kind of, and so I think it's really important when that happens to be thoughtful about, okay, so what is a good choice mm -hmm. um, for a teacher, for a principal, as they're choosing where to focus in the focused evaluation and thinking about where they feel they would like to, and maybe this is based on the results from the comprehensive evaluation, or it might be based on some specific needs that their kids have mm -hmm. that year. Mm -hmm. You know, what are my students, or what are they asking of me? Yeah right now that I'm not feeling, you know, I've always been an ace classroom manager, but this year I've got some stuff that's really thrown right. me for a loop. Right. Um, so I want to dig deeply into that. Um, so there's that whole idea of, you know, what's going to be meaningful for me mm -hmm. right now? Um, and, then, and then what's the mechanism to help with that? I think the instructional framework at this point is just a guide mm -hmm. for ideas and possibilities. and. So in my um, last evaluation on this particular criterion, my level of performance might have been basic. Mm -hmm. And so um, just kind of putting that whole conversation aside, but one to the right, what does that practice look like yeah. at the proficient level and what kinds of supports might I want for that? Or, or I really, you know, I, I felt like I, I have this, but I want to really deepen my practice. What is, mm -hmm. what is the next step for me? But really using the instructional framework, not to say you're level this, but to say, um, you know, here's, here's a great description of this and here's some resources that yeah. can, you know, help you move to the yeah. next level. You know, it's funny, we, I mean, there were some very real um, consequences in the focus world, if you grab that, I mean, there were a lot. There are a lot of evaluations that happen where people land in proficient or even distinguished, uh -huh. and have a criterion that's still basic. Exactly. Right. Yep. Um, and if I were to move on to focus in the old system mm -hmm. um, and grab onto that basic and was still basic at the end of the year, there were some real consequences. Yes, to there that, were. Right. Yeah. So yep. to be able to shift off of that and say, okay, so. Like you said, we know that overall your practice is proficient or better. Mm -hmm. So let's grab onto that piece where there's room for some growth mm -hmm. and allow you to focus in. That's exactly what we do with students in our classroom. Yes, it is. Right? We've got those students mm -hmm. who are rocking and rolling in a bunch of different areas. Mm -hmm. And we don't say, okay, great, stay, stay great at this. We right. say, okay, so let's go take a look at this other area that maybe isn't as strong for you. Mm -hmm. Because to, to get better all around, mm -hmm. everything needs to get better. That's right. So as a principal then, we really should be helping our teachers to understand that this isn't about you not being a good teacher. It's right. about you grabbing an area of your practice that could use some refinement. Mm -hmm. We all have them. Yep. And the fact that there's really kind of this hold harmless. Mm -hmm. And so my job is to work with you and to connect you with other people mm -hmm. to inspect this part of your practice that is going to benefit you and kids in our building mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to continue to grow. Right, right, yeah. yeah. And I think with that hold harmless, it's really an opportunity for, you know, when teachers first shake hands with the, with the framework, it's often, it, it's because they're new either to the to the district or to teaching. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of a big scary thing as much as districts many districts try to make that first handshake with the framework be about, you know, this is our, you know, instructional foundation, you know, blah blah blah, they don't talk about TPEP and evaluation till later. It still kind of has that feeling to it. When a teacher moves into the focused evaluation, it's like it's just this opportunity to love up your framework right. and really get to know it in a in a way where it, this isn't a scary thing. This is mm -hmm. just this is just important information that's out there that can be helpful to you as a professional as you're right. looking to grow. Yeah. 
So obviously the, the whole intent of this mm -hmm. is that, that my practice as a principal, a teacher's practice as a, you know, leading a classroom is to make sure that we're the best that we can be for kids, mm -hmm. right? Yep. And so one of our one of the components in our for, in our evaluation system is that student growth side, where yeah. it really talks about, okay, so you're doing all of these things, you're a good teacher, you're a good principal, so what? What's mm -hmm. what's the impact on kids? Mm -hmm. So built into three five eight, three six eight, depending on your framework, right? Or on your leadership or instructional, right? right. Are these student growth components? Mm -hmm. um, that seems to be wonky for some people in the mm -hmm. state. It's, it can be a little bit difficult. Um, people really struggle with what's the right thing? What mm -hmm. should I be focusing on? How do I know if I'm doing it correctly? Mm -hmm. um, can you talk a little bit about what, how you've seen that evolve around the state? Mm -hmm. Sure, sure. I think the, the thing I like to, to start with when talking about student growth is, first of all, that's the thing. Yeah. <laughs> That's why we're here. That's mm -hmm. why we have the lunch ladies and the buses and the buildings and the teachers and the principals and the district people and the mm -hmm. accountants and the, you know, it's about student growth. That's right. what we're after. So it is the most important thing. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, how we go about that and how we think about that is, is really important. Mm -hmm. um, I believe, so when TPEP was rolled out, the student growth pieces were being worked out. Right, as they came later. They came later, yeah. yeah. And because of that, I think um, they, I think, and I think this is both for good and for ill, they uh -huh. received less emphasis yep. initially than the, you know, people were all about their frameworks and mm -hmm. figuring out how to score and how, where you're gonna mm -hmm. average and where, all those things. And, um, student, oh yeah, that's right, student growth. Mm -hmm. And, um, I don't know if we were tired or if I'm or what exactly. Gun shy, what, <laughs> right. what was it? It was just new, right. it was new. And so it's like, I think people defaulted a lot to what can we easily quantify? Mm -hmm. And plus, we're all about data now. I mean, right. we have a lot of data out right. there, a lot of numbers that we can right. use, and so let's put those to work. Here. Hard concrete numbers. Concrete numbers, right. yes, yes. So, um, as I've been thinking a lot more about student growth in the last couple years, um, particularly this year, it's been really top of mind for me. Mm -hmm. um, the, the thing is, um, vocabulary lists, math timings, you know, some of those little minutia dibbles, that are dibbles, DRAs, yeah, yeah, yes, that's right, that are so easy to quantify, mm -hmm. are not really, where, not that they're not, I'm not saying they're not important, mm -hmm. but that's not where the big learning lives. Mm -hmm. We're fortunate in our state in that we have learning standards that really reflect big ideas right. and academic practices. Mm -hmm. And um, finding a way to make student growth about those mm -hmm. can give us a lot more leverage with that. Right. There was a wonderful speaker, a uh, keynote speaker at WIRA this year, um, Yemi Stembridge, mm -hmm. and he had um, video examples of three different teachers. One was a first grade teacher, and her big idea that she was trying to get across to her first graders was being reading advocates. Mm -hmm. And so when, when you're a reading advocate, it means you are you want to be reading and understanding well. So mm -hmm. when you get to a word you don't know, what do you do? And kids in her class knew six or seven different things right. that they would do when they got there. And, and for her, that was the most important thing. Not only was being a reading advocate mm -hmm. gonna help kids with first grade, but it was gonna help them for the rest right. of their lives. Right. Um, the middle school math teachers were looking at productive struggle in mm -hmm. math. And how do you, you know, when you're encountering something that's challenging, what are the different skills that you bring to it? How do you view this and continue to move on? Mm -hmm. um, it was a wonderful segment on a world history teacher who for him the big idea that he wanted his students to have was that lack of empathy was at the root of conflict in the world. Mm -hmm. And so where you see conflict, you know, what 
what were people not understanding about each other in right. order for that to happen? These are all lifelong skills. Right. These aren't just good for the test the next day. These they transcend are, grade levels and courses. Absolutely. And, right? they're, they're things about what it means to be a functioning human in the world. Right, right. And, um, and so, so the big question, though, with this is, oh, how are we going to quantify that? Yeah. <laughs> you know, how do we how do we do that? What's the number on empathy? How exactly. Do I, how do I measure empathy? Exactly. Right. And so, um, so I like to think about um, some maybe less conventional ways sometimes that mm -hmm. people might be collecting data. It's walking around with a clipboard as you're listening in to students having discussions mm -hmm. about in the in the conflict in Kosovo. You know, what were the Serbs not understanding about the Albanians, and what were the Albanians not understanding about the Serbs? Right. Um, and hearing a student articulate that and and checking them off mm -hmm. for that particular skill. Um, in and that, but that is data. That's data. Right? Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's not data. a paper pencil test, no. but it's still data that we're no, taking. No, that's right. Yeah. Um, uh, what Yemi Stembridge was doing and showed us in the keynote was um, video examples. So the first grade teacher was asking her students on video about what does it mean to what? It, what do you do when you get stuck when you're reading? And so her students were able to articulate the possible steps they would take when they got stuck when they were reading. And, um, and it was just you know, a wonderful example of yeah. how they were getting it. So I, I know, well, okay, so how am I gonna interview all you know, 37 mm -hmm. of my kids? Um, and, and I think some of it is just as we would like our principals be, to be doing the natural harvest of our teaching by leaning in and catching us doing things mm -hmm. as we go about our daily lives. There may be opportunities for teachers to be leaning in and catching their students, yeah. demonstrating these skills as they go through their work. And if you have big idea skills, you will, be, you will see them in evidence because they're not just happening at the moment where you're talking specifically about them. What you care about is that you see them happening later. So it seems to me, so we're, we're getting ready to move from this kind of continuous evaluation mm -hmm. to the evaluation event yes, in May. Yes, yeah, it's the um, time of year. Yeah, yeah <laughs> but, but then there's this great opportunity to start to talk about, okay, so what about next year? Whether it's your practice, um, whether it's some things that you're thinking about with the course or the subject that you're teaching, if you're elementary, what are you doing in math or reading? Mm -hmm. um, but it's this, I, I think about you know, what you said with uh, the idea of how do we capture that. We can get there in the student growth goals if we're mindful of that in the fall, mm -hmm. right? So when we mm -hmm. sit down and start to talk about either heading into next year, if we're having this conversation mm -hmm. in May, or even better yet, when we actually have the faces in front of us that right. we know are going to be our class this yeah. year, yeah. to talk about, okay, so what are, what are our goals for these kids? Mm -hmm. um, and to start to talk about, so what are the goals? How are we going to measure it? How do we know if we're getting there? Mm -hmm. You know, all of those things. If we're mindful about that in the beginning, then we can get at some of these kind of bigger concepts, mm -hmm. you know, the math, the reading advocates, or the, the problem solvers, or the mm -hmm. critical thinkers, any of those things. If we try and capture it now, it's mm -hmm. going to be really tough. Mm -hmm. um, but this is a great opportunity to say, so what are these kind of more um, enduring skills mm -hmm. that we want kids to have? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So thinking about May, it's mm -hmm. evaluation season. Mm -hmm. um, if we want it to really be something that's impactful, mm -hmm. not a, a grade that we stamp and say, okay, you did great this year, um, or here's some areas to improve, but really being growth-minded. Um, do you have thoughts about what the, that pre-evaluation or evaluation conversation can look like, or how we use that to kind of, and we can have a deeper conversation at some point about what does that look like to springboard into the fall. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But if we really want it to make an impact, other than it would be just this compliance thing we do in May. Mm -hmm. Do you have some thoughts around that? I think that I, I have a few, um, and I think that people out in the field have many, many more. Uh -huh. and all the things that we're talking about here, there are examples all around the state of people you know, building on what, we, what we're talking about today and, and making, it, making it sing. Um, 
I think that uh, first it's important to celebrate. <laughs> and I think taking a moment to reflect back on where things were in September, maybe, mm -hmm. you know, in, in terms of practice, you know, so all year long you've been thinking carefully about and working on and, you know, da da da. And, and, um, and so, you know, just to, to celebrate the fact that that growth has happened right. is an important thing. Um, and then I think, you know, I know it's hard, particularly with comprehensive, because you have to kind of lots of elements lots or dimensions of, lots to talk of about, stuff, right? Yeah, but also make sure that there's um, a really that there are a couple of, you know, not five, but two, mm -hmm. <laughs> or maybe three things that are, you know, the deeper part of the conversation, right. um, and and allowing the, um, you know, staying curious mm -hmm. and allowing the, uh, the teacher to be really sharing right. where, you know, what they're seeing about their work um, and their context. And um, I think those are some, some important yeah. pieces of that. I think about the, the idea of as a principal sharing my thinking with a teacher. Mm -hmm. You know, hopefully these conversations have been happening all year. Right. Um, having, it, having a teacher have that information about what I'm thinking, whether it's through eval or mm -hmm. kind of homegrown documents or whatever that is, mm -hmm. so that when we come in for that initial conversation, if I see three and you see three, is there a lot of conversation to have there yeah. as opposed to are there places where we see things differently? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Or are there places where we say, so when we look at where do we want that practice to move next mm -hmm. year, being able to probe with that teacher around, what have you thought about? Mm -hmm. You know, what, mm -hmm. wh where are some places you'd like to go? What's going to be the most beneficial and have the most impact for students and your colleagues and your families? Right. And to have that conversation there in that space, I mean, we could spend a lot of time talking about every element or dimension. Mm -hmm. um, or even if we're focused, we could spend a lot of time getting into the weeds on some things, but mm -hmm. if we stay in that space where we're talking about really diving into the things that ha that are gonna have an impact. Yes, um, yes. That's the growth-minded conversation, mm -hmm. because they're all important. Right. Um, but I would also argue that there are some that are a whole lot more important than others, yes. right? If we're talking yes. about really good instruction or mm -hmm. being a really good colleague or supporting mm -hmm. families, closing the gap, all of those mm -hmm. things. Mm -hmm. um, so I think about being able to take opportunities to front load mm -hmm. um, and then to come in and start to have that conversation mm -hmm. around, so where do we go next? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's critical. Awesome. Yeah. And a wonderful opportunity. Yeah. yeah. Great. Well, so, we, you know, we've got this opportunity in front of us. Yeah. Um, you know, there's so much work in the, in the TPEP world that um, you know, we've covered a lot of ground in the mm -hmm. last eight years. And mm -hmm. um, I know that as a when I was in the building as a principal, mm -hmm. there were times that TPEP wanted to make me pull my hair out or made it turn a little bit gray. Uh-huh, sure. Um, <laughs> but, you know, I, I really do believe that we have some great opportunities with a system that's got great frameworks, it's got great tools with how do we have those conversations. Mm -hmm. um, and some really, I think a really nimble state system Mm -hmm. those, that allows us to say, is this working? Mm -hmm. um, and if not, maybe what are some changes that we need to make? Mm -hmm. So we're really kind of in a cool space in that in some ways we feel a little bit hamstrung, but in other ways we're also nimble and responsive and it's this thing that continues to grow and kind of morph mm -hmm. and change. Yes, yes. Yeah. When it's um, kind of amazing, our framework authors all work in a number of different states. Yeah. And they say, in Washington, you've got an amazing system. Yeah. No one else is really doing this work as thoughtfully as Washington is. Yeah. And, um, and that, that was how the whole thing began, yeah. I think, in a very, very thoughtful way. Yeah. Um, so, cool. yeah. Well, thank you so much for spending thank time you, with Ron. us. I, I'm really excited about this. It's, um, it's not always easy man, it's the right thing. And I feel mm -hmm. like people are really starting to get some good traction, coming mm -hmm. up with some great ideas around mm -hmm. 
how do we make it organic mm -hmm. and honor the professionals doing the work? Mm -hmm. um, and I look forward to being able to have you back and, and really start to dive into some of these concepts that we kind of skimmed over the top of today. So, That'd be great. I'd love yeah. to do that. Well, thank you very much for spending time with us. Thanks, and, Ron. And um, we look forward to the next conversation. Great. Me too. Take care. Mm -hmm.